This week's patients include a woman whose chronic body odour has taken her to the brink. At one stage, I was borderline suicidal with it. First through the doors is a patient traumatised by a rare condition. My name's Ellie James, I'm 42, I currently live in Bristol and I have trimethylaminuria, which is also known as Fischoda syndrome. Hormones, illness and diet can all determine our particular smell, but for Ellie it's much more complex. I emit a variety of odours such as sulphur, ammonia, burnt rubber, rotting garbage and marzipan. Trimethylaminuria or fish odour syndrome is a rare condition where the body loses the ability to break down a compound in certain foods. This causes the sufferer to give off unpleasant smells ranging from fish to faeces. Living with this condition is often socially isolating and can result in depression and other psychological problems. It's not just that it smells revolting, you can be spreading a smell for 15 feet. If you're in a small room or you're on public transport and you're having an episode of this, you'll see people start rubbing their noses um, because you are literally gassing them. Their eyes water, they cough, they sneeze. For some people, symptoms are intermittent, but Ellie's are constant. You stop going out in public, you don't want to go to the shops. I've been through the bullying, I've left jobs because of this. I've really, really suffered, actually. Um, at one stage, I was borderline suicidal with it. I went to several GPs, none of whom knew what I had. Most suggested I had a mental health problem and that I was imagining it. After 11 years of living with this condition, Ellie only recently got a formal diagnosis. Like many of us, she went online to research her condition. When she read that her odour could potentially be managed through diet, she took the extreme step of cutting out all but a handful of foods. I haven't had any professional proper advice about my diet yet. It's hit and miss, it's trial and error. Ellie's restricted diet is dominating her life, so she's come to see GP Gio Maletto for some advice. Ellie, you have a condition called fish odour syndrome, or otherwise known as TMAU, which stands for trimethylaminuria. Trimethylamine is a compound that's produced by the body and normally got rid of very quickly by an enzyme. Trouble is, in your case, you don't have enough of that enzyme, so it's not got rid of, it builds up and it's released in the saliva, in the breath, in secretions of your body, yeah. in the vagina, the skin, yeah, everywhere. Uh, and the urine, and it's very, very smelly. There is no cure for Ellie's condition. But by limiting or avoiding foods that are high in a nutrient called choline, found in fish, milk and red meat, it is possible to minimise the constant smells. I've researched what foods are high in choline and completely cut them out. Um, and that has probably cut my odour by about 70%. But I'm worried about it because I don't understand enough about the food connections, perhaps to make informed decisions. What would you like to achieve here? I want to feel that I'm not in a food prison anymore. I'd like food to be pleasurable again. Ellie's self-treatment may be partly controlling her odour, but the food hospital's dietitian Lucy Jones has studied her restricted diet and has some major concerns. So, Ellie, talk me through the, the changes that you have done. Um, I've cut out pretty much everything. All right. <laughs> um, I've cut out coffee, chocolate, all proteins, all animal products, dairy, most things actually. So an easier question might have been, tell me what you eat. Yeah. <laughs> Normally I'll have strawberries and apples and pears. Um, that's usually breakfast. Lunch and tea are usually soup made from a combination of carrots, apples, cucumbers, sometimes peppers, um, that's usually it. And has your weight been affected by this diet? Um, yeah, yeah, I've lost three stone since I was diagnosed and I've lost two stone in the last sort of 10 months or so. After cutting out all foods containing choline from her diet, Ellie is more than a stone and a half under her ideal weight. 
It doesn't sound like you're having a lot of fat and obviously the overriding thing is protein, mm. goodness. Yeah. The female body has a finite need for protein, you know, 45 to 50 grams a day minimum. If you don't eat that, your body is going to break down your muscles in order to fuel that need. And all the major organs in your body are made of muscles. So it's going to be damaging, weakening your heart. Potentially, you could be at risk of cancer, osteoporosis, even things as simple as, as your gum health and your teeth health. Mm. I'm guessing that your relationship with food must have crumbled. Um, yeah, it's not good. Um, I'm afraid to eat, right. um, but I'm constantly hungry, so I'm constantly obsessing. There must be a wider range of food I can eat. I think there has to be, because you will not have a long life mm. if you continue on the level of dietary restriction mm. that you're having at the moment. Some foods are thought to increase body odour in all of us, such as garlic, onions and spicy foods. But for people with fish odour syndrome, foods like fish, red meat, egg yolks and beans are also a no-go. You've accessed a lot of information on the web, but not all of it complete. Yeah. And so because of your fear, you've always taken the cautious route, which has left you just unable to eat anything. And actually mm -hmm. loads of these foods you can eat safely. I want you to be able to eat cottage cheese and I want you to be starting to have egg white omelette. Oh, that would be great. Yes, and there's no great. reason why we can't do that. Lucy wants to put Ellie on a low choline rather than a no choline diet. The aim is to control the odour, but gradually reintroduce some foods Ellie has chosen to cut out to increase the essential nutrients her body needs. I knew that restricting my diet so much was going to cause problems with things like osteoporosis, but I justified that that was a decent trade-off. I had no idea I was causing long-term damage to my internal organs. That was a major shock, quite a wake-up call, and it's made me realise that although I'm short-term managing my symptoms, this is not the way to do it. Prescribed her own extremely limited low-choline diet, trying to manage her fish odour syndrome through food. But Lucy is concerned that Ellie is becoming seriously malnourished as a result of this. And because her condition is so rare, Lucy is sending Ellie to University College London to see a leading expert in metabolic medicine for specialist support. We start off just by talking about trimethylaminuria and what it is, and then move on to how we can treat it. Uh, then we can come back to how that applies to you and what you're doing at the moment. Dr Lackman and his team have devised a food plan which should reduce Ellie's body odours and also give her the essential nutrition Lucy was so concerned about, decreasing her risk of serious health problems. Basically, we split things up using a traffic light system and we have red foods that really contain quite large amounts of choline you should try and avoid. Mm. At the other end of the spectrum, there are the green foods which you should be able to eat pretty freely. After two and a half years of her harmful, restricted diet, Ellie's new list of safe foods includes egg white, sausages, oats and bread, which shouldn't aggravate her condition. It's taken me so long to cut all of that unknown food out. The thought that I have to cede control of that and start putting it back in was actually really frightening. But I'm going to try them in small doses, um, say on a Friday night, when I don't have to see anyone till a Monday, um, and see how I get on with it. Like many people, Ellie consulted the internet to get medical information. And while that's empowering to an extent, what she lacked was a broader specialist perspective on her problem. And now she's got that. It's been nearly three weeks since Ellie visited the food hospital and was prescribed her low choline food plan. Fish odour syndrome is not simple to treat, as different foods trigger bad smells in different people. So Ellie's regime reintroduces her to certain foods one at a time to see which might give her an adverse reaction. I am still nervous about trying new foods, and um, particularly foods that I associate with having a bad odour, but I'm willing to give them a go. On the list today, we're going to try egg white omelette. Lucy wants Ellie to introduce more foods so she can eat a normal, balanced diet and return to a healthy weight. This is her first time eating egg whites in over three years. I'm really, really hungry. I'm really looking forward to this and it smells really nice. Actually, it doesn't smell eggy at all. It just smells like cooking. Mm, it doesn't taste too bad, actually. 
While it's essential Ellie identifies foods that trigger her odour, she still struggles with the psychological effects of her condition. There are things I'm still anxious about. I've still got the boundaries of things I know I won't try, or the boundary of things, I'll try this, but I'll only try it on the weekend. I did have a bad day last Monday, a very bad day, and I, I had to go and meet a lot of people for work. And I knew I was having a bad day, and that was very difficult. That was almost like just going back to the beginning of the whole process. Will Ellie manage to hold her nerve and keep testing foods that trigger her fish odour syndrome? Three weeks ago, Ellie came to the food hospital with fish odour syndrome, which made her feel like an outcast and was endangering her health. She's back to tell Lucy and Gio how she is coping with her reintroduction of foods to try to up her nutrient intake. I've been trying lots of different types of foods that I was too scared to try before. Um, mixed results, some of them have actually caused a bit of an odour problem, but some of them haven't at all. So I've been going through the list and working out what definitely is a problem and what is definitely fine. But um, I'm really enjoying cooking and making food again, and before it was just something I didn't really want to deal with. So do you yeah. feel that like your relationship with food is evolving for the good? Yeah, it is. No, I mean, my diet's still restricted. Um, there's things I'm not ever going to have again, like meat, because I mm. know that'll be a problem. Um, but just a wider combination than yeah. what I was eating. I've been having things like bagels and crumpets for breakfast, which I haven't had for a couple of years. And wow, having a crumpet and jam and a bit <laughs> of butter for breakfast is... It's, I can't tell you the difference it's made to my um, quality of life. Ellie's previous diet was so restricted, Lucy and Gio discovered she was seriously underweight and probably malnourished. Here we are, three short weeks later, you've gained a kilo, which is actually over two pounds. And the best news is that within the bit of weight that you have gained, it's actually been lean body mass, it's been protein making oh, your muscles. <laughs> so you have yeah. more muscle, which is fantastic news, because obviously that's what I've been really concerned yeah. about. So your body is recovering. I'm so impressed in the transformation in just three short weeks. You've clearly really gone at it wholeheartedly. There's no point screwing up an opportunity like this. And I had no idea how miserable it was making me. Um, and I just felt like a completely different person. You do seem transformed, to be honest. Like, you just seem like the curtains lifted. And yeah, like, that's how it feels. Yeah. Um, and I'm stunned by that. I was, wasn't expecting that at all. Three weeks ago, food was the enemy for Ellie, and she was doing untold damage to her body. I'm happy to say she's now enjoying food and still managing to control her fish odour syndrome. I feel like I'm getting my life back. I know I'm always going to have the condition, but I feel differently about it. And it's like the world's opening up again. And I know that sounds a bit unbelievable after three weeks, but it's really how I feel. Um, I've got so much hope. Um, and it's just amazing.